humans are harmless. That phrase, spoken with unshakable confidence, echoed in the halls of the Galactic Assembly. It was a comforting lie for many, until the day it wasn't. The chamber of the Galactic Assembly hummed with quiet confidence. Over a thousand species filled the vast dome, their representatives seated in tiered rows, each murmuring in their unique languages. At the heart of the chamber, a holographic projection of the galactic map shimmered in blue. Commander Holden watched from the shadows of a corner balcony. Humans have no ambition beyond their own borders, stated Counselor Talrex. Their focus is on resource gathering and trade, hardly a species to concern ourselves with. Polite chuckles rippled through the assembly. Humans were, by most metrics, unremarkable, technologically average, physically unimpressive. Holden grinned to himself. They didn't see it yet. They wouldn't. Not until it was too late. Three weeks earlier, Earth's Council of Nations had convened a closed session. The Assembly's latest decrees had arrived. Restrictions on human fleet sizes, forced tariffs on essential imports, and limits on trade routes through secure assembly corridors. Compliance, said General Alden Royce, tapping the hollow table for emphasis, is not an option. The room buzzed with tense energy. Politicians argued in clipped tones while military advisors exchanged glances. Holden leaned back in his chair, observing. The Silent Forge doctrine had prepared for this exact moment. When the bickering subsided, Holden finally spoke. If they want harmless, we'll give them harmless. Now Holden's fleet drifted in the space just beyond the Assembly's core systems. They'd traveled unnoticed through backwater routes and old trade lanes, their vessels powered down to avoid detection. Even now, his flotilla appeared underwhelming. A handful of frigates, an outdated cruiser, and a scattering of support ships. They're not even looking for us, Lieutenant Commander Idris muttered from the sensor console. Good, Holden replied, leaning over the bridge railing. Let them think we're insignificant. The flotilla burst into the edges of the core systems like wolves slipping into a sleeping herd. Assembly fleets were stationed here, their massive rigid formations guarding the capital planets. They dwarfed the human flotilla in every respect, size, firepower, and numbers. Contacts, Idris called out. Three fleets on intercept courses estimate two minutes to engagement. Holden tapped his wrist console, pulling up the tactical display. The assembly's formations filled the screen. The Silent Forge Doctrine hadn't been created to outmuscle such fleets. It had been designed to outthink them. Begin Operation Splinter, Holden ordered. The human ships sprang to life. Engines flared and ships scattered in controlled chaos, each moving with an erratic but purposeful trajectory. Holden's frigates darted between asteroid fields and debris clouds firing off decoys to confound targeting systems. The assembly fleet's lead ship, a dreadnought, fired the first shot. A lance of blue energy screamed past Holden's cruiser, narrowly missing. They're taking the bait, Idris reported, a grin spreading across his face. The human flotilla didn't return fire immediately. Instead, they exploited every blind spot and gap in the assembly's unwieldy formations. Smaller ships weaved through the larger ones, deploying magnetic pulse charges that short-circuited targeting systems. Assembly ships fired wildly, their weapons useless without accurate targeting. Frigate Bravo is drawing the third fleet off course, came the report from Tactical. They're splitting up. Holden's grin widened. The Assembly's strength had always been its unity, its rigid hierarchy. Divide that, and the cracks began to show. In the Assembly's command station orbiting their capital, Admiral Dovrek watched the battle unfold with growing disbelief. How are they evading our fire? he asked, slamming a clawed hand on the console. Human ships are erratic, sir, an aide stammered. They don't follow any patterns. 
Dovrik growled, his tail lashing. Conventional patterns are what win wars. Deploy the reserve fleet. Uh, already engaged, sir. Dovrek turned back to the hologram. Small blips representing human ships darted around their massive counterparts. Even when a human vessel was destroyed, it was never in vain. Its destruction often took out crucial assembly systems or sowed chaos in their lines. How are they doing this? Dovrik muttered, his confidence beginning to waver. On the bridge of Holden's cruiser, officers called out status updates. He watched as the tactical display shifted in their favor. Group Alpha, push toward the Second Fleet's flank, he ordered. Deploy swarm drones to cover Bravo's retreat. One of the assembly's dreadnoughts turned too slowly to avoid a human frigate racing toward it. The frigate detonated in a brilliant flash, its payload ripping into the dreadnought's unarmored underbelly. A chain reaction of explosions followed, and the once mighty vessel disintegrated. A cheer erupted on the bridge, but Holden raised a hand to silence it. We're not done. Admiral Dovrik's flagship is retreating toward the capital planet, Idris noted. Good. We'll give them something to remember us by. Holden leaned forward. Prepare for orbital insertion. As the battle raged, the true scope of the Silent Forge doctrine began to unfold. It was dismantling the Assembly's fleets piece by piece. The rigid hierarchy and slow adaptability of the Assembly's forces left them vulnerable to the humans' unorthodox tactics. By the time Holden's cruiser reached orbit above the Assembly's capital, the remaining defense fleets had scattered, their morale shattered. Assembly leaders watched in stunned silence as human ships held position over their most secure world. In the command room of his cruiser, Holden stood before a communication console. Open a channel to the Assembly Council, he said. The holographic image of Counselor Talrex appeared, his face a mixture of rage and disbelief. This is an act of war, Commander Holden. Holden smiled thinly. War? No, we just wanted to make sure you'd listen. The battle was won, but the war, if it could be called that, was just beginning. Holden stood in the midst of his bridge crew, his eyes focused on the flickering holographic display of the capital planet beneath them. Below him, the Assembly's once glorious capital was still teeming with military might. Ships and stations buzzed about in orbit, their officers no doubt scrambling to organize a counterattack, or, worse, negotiating surrender. But Holden knew better than to assume this would be over so quickly. Close all remaining exits, Holden ordered. No one leaves without a formal acknowledgement of our terms. Lieutenant Commander Idris nodded, inputting commands. The human flotilla had taken control of the capital's orbit with ease, but that was only part of the plan. The real game would be played in the heart of the assembly itself, where the true stakes were not about firepower, but about recognition. In the assembly's capital, panic was beginning to set in. The great hall where the governing body convened had fallen silent. Representatives from a thousand species had gathered, their fear palpable, as news of Holden A's actions filtered in. Some tried to flee, others argued for force, but the sharp-eyed among them knew that even their vast numbers couldn't guarantee survival against the human's strange brand of warfare. Counselor Talrax, flanked by several military advisors, stared at the now-silent communication screen, his claws gripping the edge of the table. How can this be? They should be beneath us, their technology is subpar, their ships barely hold together. This shouldn't be possible. One of his advisors, a tall being with shimmering skin, spoke cautiously. It's not their technology, Talrex. It's their unpredictability. The humans, they fight differently. You speak of them as if they are a threat. Talrex scoffed. I thought we had learned everything about them. They hit it well then the advisor muttered. Too well. This silent forge doctrine? It's a cloak of simplicity, but inside, 
It's genius. Back in the quiet of Holden's command center, the silence was palpable, thick with anticipation. Holden walked slowly around the central hollow tank as the report streamed in, detailing the unfolding chaos below. His fleet was intact. He'd won the first round, but what came next was far more delicate. Are you sure about this? Idris asked, standing at the edge of the room. We could demand more power, resources, territory. Holden turned, his face serious but not unkind. We didn't come here to conquer Idris. We came here for something far more valuable. The Assembly's power doesn't lie in its fleets. It lies in its influence. Idris frowned but said nothing more. He knew Holden's instincts were sharp. It had always been about waiting for the right moment, finding the pressure point. Prepare for the meeting, Holden said. I'm going to offer them a deal. The assembly chamber was cold and silent when Holden entered, flanked by his senior officers. The assembly's leaders were already present, their eyes narrowed with hostility, but also tinged with the understanding that they were in no position to dictate terms. Talrex's voice broke the tension. What do you want from us, human? You've destroyed our fleets, and you occupy our capital. What do you propose? Holden stood at the center of the room, his expression a mask of calm. I don't want your fleets. I don't want your planets. What I want is recognition. Equal standing, a seat at the table. You dare ask for a seat among us? Chalrex snarled, his hands shaking with barely contained rage. Your species is barely a blip on the galactic map. You have no place here. Holden's eyes narrowed. You think we're just a blip, do you? That's what we've always been to you, isn't it? You didn't even bother to look. You saw our ships, our tech, and you thought we were unworthy of consideration. He stepped forward. I'm here to tell you that we're more than just harmless. We are more than just resource gatherers, and if you keep dismissing us, if you keep underestimating us, then I will show you what happens when you make that mistake. Tall Rex blinked, his pupils narrowing in distaste. You have won this moment, but you will not win the galaxy. You are nothing but a passing storm. Holden remained unfazed. You think so? Wait until you see how we weather it. The tense silence stretched on for what felt like an eternity. Holden stood tall, feeling the weight of the moment. He wasn't asking for mercy, and he wasn't demanding anything that wasn't justified. The humans had fought and bled for this moment, and if the assembly leaders refused to recognize them, there would be consequences. For all their power, for all their pride, they were still vulnerable and Holden knew just where to apply the pressure. Finally, Talrex, looking cornered but trying to retain some semblance of authority, made a decision. You will have your seat at the table, he muttered. But make no mistake, your presence here is temporary. Holden's smile was slight but meaningful. We'll see. With the first negotiation behind him, Holden turned to his officers as they exited the chamber. Idris walked up beside him. So, it's done then? Not yet, Holden replied. This is just the start. The assembly might accept us for now, but they'll keep testing us. They'll want to see if we'll fold. If they think we're weak, they'll come for us again. Uh, and what happens then? Holden's gaze drifted back to the capital planet. Then we show them what happens when you underestimate a species that's learned to survive by fighting for everything. We fight on our terms and we'll make sure they remember this day. The words of Taurak still echoed in Holden's ears as his fleet remained in orbit around the Assembly's capital. His victory felt incomplete. They had been granted a seat, yes, but the seeds of doubt still festered beneath the surface. The assembly's words rang hollow. They hadn't truly accepted the humans, they had merely been forced to acknowledge their presence. It was a precarious balance, one that could topple at any moment. But Holden had a plan. He always did. 
Three days after the initial negotiations, the human's fleet had settled into a low orbit above the capital, appearing for all the galaxy to see as a simple force of occupation. In truth, they were already at work. Holden's fleet wasn't just another military presence. It was a symbol. Every ship, every officer, was a reminder to the assembly that their perception of the humans was wrong. It was the human way to survive, to adapt, to use the very systems that sought to limit them. Sir, the Idrises said, a message from the assembly. They've invited us back for another session. Holden didn't flinch. Let's see what they really want now. The assembly hall was filled with a tense quiet as Holden entered. This time, the atmosphere was different. There was no mockery in the air. The leaders of the assembly had learned to be wary. They weren't facing a race of weaklings. They were staring down the barrel of something unknown. And that fear, subtle as it was, gave the humans a unique advantage. Talrix greeted him with a forced smile. Commander Holden, you've surprised us. I will admit, your fleet is not what we anticipated. Not surprising, though, is it? Holden said, his tone flat. You thought we were harmless? Talrex's expression hardened, but he didn't respond. Instead, he motioned for the hollow table to be activated, revealing the latest reports and data. We've reviewed your fleet's performance. It's impressive, but there's something we need to discuss. He flicked his fingers, and the images shifted. We're we need to discuss your continued presence here in the assembly, the peace, the harmony. It's all been unsettled. Holden leaned forward. I'm not here to upset peace. I'm here because you've taken advantage of our silence for too long. You dismissed us, underestimated us, and now you're trying to claim that our very existence disrupts the galaxy's balance? We are not questioning your right to be here, Talrex countered. What we are questioning is your method of entering this space. Your fleet, your technology, it's a clear sign that you've been preparing for something. What are you planning, human? Holden's lips twisted into a wry smile. What I'm planning? We're not planning to dominate. We're not planning to rule. We're planning to survive. And we'll do that by showing you that we're capable of anything. The room was quiet for a long moment. Talrex's lips thinned. And you think this is the way to gain the assembly's trust? <laughs> no. Holden said, but I think this is the way to get what we deserve, respect. Over the next few days, Holden and his officers sat through more meetings, always maintaining the same calm, confident posture. Each session was a reminder to the assembly that the human fleet was a reality, not a fleeting problem. They demanded more than just acknowledgement, they demanded influence. They demanded to sit at the table where decisions were made, not because they wanted to take over, but because they had earned the right to be heard. And as the days passed, the assembly began to feel the sting of their own hubris. Behind the scenes, murmurs of doubt began to spread. Some members of the assembly leadership openly admitted their regret over their earlier underestimation of the humans, while others doubled down, insisting they still had the upper hand. But the truth was clear. The humans had made their mark, and there would be no unmaking it. Weeks later, Holden stood on the bridge of his flagship, staring out into the space. The assembly had agreed to a final treaty, a formal recognition of human presence, and a promise to include them in future decisions of the Galactic Order. The assembly's fleets no longer mocked the human ships that appeared alongside them. The galaxy had changed, and it was the humans who had reshaped it. Idris walked up beside him, his expression thoughtful. We did it. You were right. They did listen. Holden's gaze remained fixed on the distant stars, not because they wanted to, but because they had no choice. And now, Idris asked? Now we wait, 
Holden replied. The galaxy doesn't change overnight, but it does change. And the next time someone underestimates us, they'll think twice. A transmission flickered to life on the console before them, an encrypted message from the assembly council. The words were simple, but the tone was unmistakable. We acknowledge the humans as full members of the Galactic Assembly. Your presence will be respected. Holden stood, his mind already turning to the next challenge. We're not done yet, he muttered, not by a long shot. The Assembly may have granted them a seat at the table, but the human legacy was far from complete. As long as there were those who underestimated the depths of their courage, or more importantly, the depth of their creativity, they would always have something to prove. And in that, Holden knew, lay the key to the humans' true power. With the humans now formally integrated into the Galactic Assembly, their influence began to grow. Though their methods were unconventional, their willingness to confront the odds head-on and leverage their ingenuity turned the tide. The galaxy had underestimated them, but no longer.